welcome to the Black and White building. This is uh, 5,000 square meters of co-working space in Shoreditch. The building is entirely made of engineered timber from the ground floor slab up. So all the lift shafts, the staircases, the columns, beams, floor slabs, curtain walling, external louvers, all made from engineered timber. The primary benefit of building the building in timber is the vast reduction in carbon that you can achieve by not building in concrete and steel. But we're also building from a building material that we can grow, that we're not scraping off the surface of the planet, that we're not extracting from the planet and that we can never put back. So this is a replenishable building material. It's also completely prefabricated. So the entire building, six stories, is made from 872 pieces of timber. And each one of those, you know, kind of carefully catalogued, arrives on site with a QR code. So it's a, it's a very kind of systematic, sophisticated construction process. Or well, not even a construction process, it's an assembly process. Waste is minimal. So when we were building the timber structure, we didn't send a single skip to landfill in 16 weeks. It took about 20 weeks to build a single basement story and then 16 weeks to build six stories above. So very fast, just four people. Um, there is concern currently around insurance and particularly you know, around changes in the building regulations and just the perception of combustible materials post Grenfell. I think you know, people, are, people are concerned and because we build with a combustible material, it's something that you know, we've taken, I think, particularly seriously in the buildings that we build. We have a fire engineer on every project and that fire engineer has a peer reviewing fire engineer. So um, we're really, you know, really studious about the attention to detail in terms of fire protection. And also we talk to insurers early. So we bring the insurers on board really early. Um, we introduce them to the fire engineers. We, we take them through the plans, through the, through our, our kind of, you know, through the thinking behind the design. And certainly in this building, when we were talking about uh, the insurance for this building, the insurers said that actually the fire, they understood the kind of the level of precaution that had been taken, the level of care, but they were more worried about long-term uh, water ingress. So what happens if the toilets flood? Um, and we explained to them that we have leak detection systems on the, on the, on the, on the water um, supply, etc. But actually they were worried about, you know, long-term leaking dripping taps, that kind of thing, leaking pipes. And so what we did was to propose that we replaced all the CLT in the floor slab, that we replaced that with joists and plywood. And that was within their, within their kind of accepted scope of, 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 uh, of structure. So they were really happy with that. Um, and for our sake, actually, we don't need CLT in the floor slab of the toilets. So I think that probably the adaptability um, and the, the kind of and the cost saving by putting joists and plywood in the loo it's probably something we'll always do now. One of the beauties of working in timber is obviously you know you have an ancient tradition of timber buildings but the timber that we're working with here is incredibly sophisticated. I mean it's rudimentary as a material you know it's just planks of timber and a very small amount of adhesive but the process is that we design, that we engineer, and that we construct these buildings where they're incredibly sophisticated, um, you know, IT-based BIM solutions for, for, for the whole process. The columns and the beams are, and actually the CLT are from Germany, uh, the curtain wallings from Sweden, and the external louvers are from the United States. And one of the beauty, beauties of this material is how adaptable it is. So, you know, to if you wanted to make a window here, well, you'd need plan planning consent. <laughs> planning consent and a chainsaw. <laughs> so it's very adaptable. So um, it's co-working space designed for, for quite intensive use. Um, and one of, the, you know, one of the advantages is that we can move walls around, we can, um, we can build new offices within the space. And using the, so we have um, four different types of engineered timber. So the, the frame of the building is made from LVL, which is uh, like a, it's like a jumbo plywood, so hardwood veneer. 
and um, which is made by kind of you know you put the tree tree trunk on a big spiralizer and you, you, you kind of pump out this m massive long sheets of veneer, slice those up and build up the columns or the beams. You build those up to form the frame. And the frame takes all the gravitational load of the building. And then the CLT, which is softwood planks of timber, which forms the floor slabs and the core, that CLT, rather than sitting on the frame, sits within the frame. And so then it locks the frame and um, so that kind of gives it protection against the shear forces. So because our buildings are so light, it's not so much that you're trying to hold the building up, it's all about the wind force, the shear forces on the building. So by locking the frame, um, using the CLT floor slabs, we're able to um, reduce those shear forces onto the, within the structure and therefore save on timber. So using less timber, we, um, we ensure that the building is, is, you know, is cost effective. So we're cost equivalent with concrete here, but faster. Yeah, we have, so we're working on a project um, which we call a new model building, which is a generic um, residential typology for buildings below 18 meters, residential buildings below 18 meters. And the idea is that we design a system that has a CLT structure and then the external wall the external envelope is built from light gauge steel. So the principle is that the uh, non-combustible external wall is separated from the timber structure itself. And so we're working with warranty providers, with fire brigade, um, with the fire engineering department at UCL, and with Bureau Happold to, to design this pre-warranty system for housing. And so we've been in discussion with um, the deputy mayor around that and many housing associations and house builders. So that, that piece of work will be finished within the next month or so and then we'll have this kind of pre-warranty system that people will be able to build with with the confidence that they'll, they can get warranties, insurance and therefore mortgages. You know, post Grenfell there was a lot of um, a lot of pseudo common sense was applied to how we should build housing rather than listening to people who were directly involved, the fire engineers on the Hackett report, you know, the, the people that have been involved in, in looking at the building regulations, that rather than really understanding what those people were saying, that it wasn't the building regulations, isn't the building regulations that were at fault in Grenfell, it was the system which built those buildings, the systems of responsibility. And it, it's really frustrating because the first tall timber buildings in the world we're here, we're in the UK. You know, this is something that we innovated and we alone are changing our building regulations, have changed our building, re building regulations to work against timber. Every other country, every other Western country is, are changing their regulations to promote timber. Their governments are procuring timber only buildings. You know, there's a real understanding outside the UK that this is a really important issue. But in the UK, it, doesn't seem to kind of filter through. And the, the embodied carbon of construction is a massive emitter of carbon, about 14% in the UK, which is totally unregulated, uncontrolled, really vastly unacknowledged. <laughs> we have um, three office projects in the US, um, large office projects, 20,000 square meters around all three of them. We've got um, a 50,000 square meter project in Milan, um, and we have other projects in Stockholm, Amsterdam, Brussels, Valencia, um, and, and more elsewhere, but, but not much in the UK, unfortunately. Um, we have a very speculative development market in comparison to lots of other places, especially in Europe, where, um, where the planning system describes development much more specifically. Um, so in the UK, that, that level of speculation within the development market I don't think is, is helpful for, for innovation. Um, we, you know, we, we did have Grenfell, which has really changed the perception of timber buildings, which is, you know, which is um, also more difficult. But I think there was also, I don't know, perhaps it's just a particularly British thing. I mean, I've sat in a room with developers who sort of thumped the table and said, let's go and speak to some Swedish architects about this. They must know how to do this. And we're sitting there going, no, we started it. It happened here first. 
So I think that there's kind of like, there's also an assumption that everybody else must be doing this better than us. But that's not the case, that so much of the expertise actually lies in the UK. Things will change. That have, they have to change. I mean, this is, as we get better at other things, the level of, um, the, the level of carbon emissions in construction will become increasingly apparent. You know, we will, we will be the exposed rock as the kind of like, you know, as the tide goes down, as we get better at other stuff. So the transformation toward timber construction, I'm sure is inevitable. It's just how long it's going to take. So we don't have our own homegrown industry yet in the UK. I think we would have had if it hadn't have been for the decrease in the amount of timber, the reduction in the amount of timber that we use. So a couple of years ago, Binderholtz, one of the biggest CLT producers, bought British Softwoods, which is one of our largest sawmills in the UK. So there is an opportunity and a possibility that we can manufacture in the UK. I think we just need to build that domestic market. You imagine if you make a modular, if you make a modular apart, two bedroom apartment in timber, in, in, you know, in flat sheets of CLT, you need about uh, 12, 14 sheets of CLT. If you do that in light gauge steel, you need about 700 components. So every time you change the design, you have to rejig the machine for all those components. Whereas in CLT, all you do is you change the cutting file. So the process in, in, in producing the prefabricated elements in timber always remains the same. And the, the product, the end product, can be completely different each time. You know, it's just kind of comforting to be around timber. It's that, you know, we always make sure that we use clear glazing on our buildings so you get natural daylight into the spaces that you kind of... I think that relationship with the natural world, the importance of that relationship on, on our own psyche and, and, you know, and well-being, health and well-being, is a really important part of building in timber.